Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today for a quick video. I should be doing my uh, Project Apocalypse check-in, but it's slightly delayed. It should be up next week. I've had a really busy week or two. Interstate, son's birthday, birthday party, my birthday, all this kind of stuff. So I thought I'll do a quick video to make sure I have one up this week. But this is going to be my buy, buy, buy series, which is a series that I really like the idea of, but I don't, don't buy enough to make it super interesting. So the premise of this video is anything I buy this year that's beauty related, I need to get rid of something that is similar to it, um, unless I've got no other products of that sort of category in my collection. So for example, um, I've got two showers and in my two showers, I have a shampoo and a conditioner and they're the only shampoo and conditioners I have in my house. So as soon as I use up a shampoo and conditioner, I'm allowed to buy one without sacrificing um, a like product. But for example, if I buy a foundation, knowing that I've got a drawer full of like 12 of them, I have to give up one to make room for it. So that's why whatever I buy, I have to say bye bye to something similar. So I think I last did this in March. Um, so the last two months I have bought a few things, not much, I actually don't buy that many products, um, but I bought a nail base coat. This is from Jin Soon um, and it is the Power Coat. Now I bought this to replace my Kester Black. Um, I think it's a Miracle Base Coat. It's the one that's sort of like pearlescent pink. I'll have a photo on the screen. I love that base coat because not only is it nourishing, but I find that when I put, so what I tend to do with my nail polish, like I've got today, I put a base coat, I put two coats of nail polish, and then I let that completely dry. And I do two coats of uh, top coat, like gel top coat to make it last a little bit longer because my nails chip like crazy. Now I found that the Kester Black Miracle base coat, I think that's what it's called, um, that for some reason works really well with gel top coats. They work beautifully. It almost transforms the, the nail polish into lasting like a normal uh, full gel set. Um, so I love that base coat, but I was lazy and I didn't want to go to the shops and buy it because I could order it online, but then I had to meet shipping or pay for shipping. And then I've got a shop that's like, a 20 minute drive away that stocks it. And I was like, I could drag my toddler to the shops and we could go buy one, or I could just sit back and order something else that is highly rated and get it delivered in like two days and not pay shipping. So that's what I did. I ordered this from Mecca. It's got good reviews and I don't think it's a bad base coat, but it works a lot better with just nail polish. I don't feel like it um, does anything great with a gel top coat. So I've got it on now. There is already chipping and I've only had this on for a few days. Whereas I feel like with the Kester black one, uh, there wouldn't be so much chipping. And I also found that sometimes with the nail polish and gel combination, um, they'll just like pop off after a couple of days. So this doesn't hold nail polish and gel as well as the Kester black one. So I probably wouldn't repurchase this in the future. I should have just gone the Kester black one but I wanted to try something different. Now I did buy this because I had no other base coats. Um, so technically I don't need to get rid of anything, but I am gonna get rid of this old Kester Black nail polish. This is the shade, oh, I don't even know. It's old and it's a like a nude color and it's like semi sheer. Now I'm getting rid of this because I tried to use it the other day and um, it's sort of like a milky consistency where it can look a bit streaky and it doesn't really suit me. I find darker nudes tend to suit me and the more opaque nudes. So I'm getting rid of this anyway. So didn't have to sacrifice something, but I thought I've got so many nail polishes, I may as well. All right, the next thing I bought was a hair product. Now this is a sea salt spray from R & Co. I love R & Co. Everything I've tried from R & Co has been really good for my hair. My hair looks like a mess today. I literally went to Jimbaroo in the morning with my kid. I went to the doctors, I did some stuff and I only put on some makeup and a dress like 10 minutes ago. So um, I look a bit shambles, but I really like everything I've tried from R & Co. And the reason I picked this up, firstly, I was looking at it a few months ago and it was out of stock at Adore Beauty. And then um, when I saw it was back in stock, I think I had a code, so I thought I'll use it. Now, the reason I wanted to get this is because I have been borrowing my hairdresser's Davines sea, sea salt spray. So um, when she first cut my hair this length, I actually got it cut again last week. But when she first cut my hair this length, which was I think back in December, she let me borrow this and said, see how you go with it. Um, Cause it might be good at sort of just stopping it sort of looking frizzy and sort of piecing it together and making it look a bit messy. Um, and I really do like this and I would purchase this. I think it's a really nice sea salt spray. The reason I didn't want to 
was because this is massive. This is 250 mils. This one is 219 mils. And I feel like this is going to take me like a year or two to get through. This will take me like five years to get through. So even though I liked it, I thought, Unless I can get a mini, um, I want to look somewhere else. So this was borrowed, so it's not mine. Um, so I decided to buy this um, as a sort of replacement. I love R & Co as a brand. It works really well for my hair. And this smells amazing. All their products smell like a perfume that I'd wear. When I smell this, I just smell like a um, lemon margarita with like a salt rim because this smells to me like lemon and salt and I just think it's amazing. I really like it. So what I tend to do with this is on the second or third day because I sort of have to brush my hair. So after I've washed it, I sort of just let it air dry and do its thing. Um, but when I do have to brush my hair the next day or the day after, um, it can get quite frizzy and end up looking a bit like triangle-ish. Um, so to bring it back to looking a little bit more PC like this, I use something like this because if I use anything that's like creamy or heavy it sort of makes my hair look dirty whereas a bit of sea salt spray just breaks up that frizz um, without adding too much weight to my hair so it's the first time in my life that I've appreciated a sea salt spray I do remember a time when I was um, a bit younger they were pushing sea salt sprays like to everyone and being like it's the next amazing thing um, I never saw the hype of them but with my hair texture and my hair length at the moment I really do like this. So um, yeah, I've purchased this. Now, even though I didn't own a sea salt spray, I am getting rid of a hair product. Now this is from Kevin Murphy and it's the Shimmer Shine um, Shine Mist. Essentially, it's a product that's got this sort of gold shimmer in it um, and you spray it into your hair and it makes your hair look shiny. Um, I did try to pan this for a while and it was <laughs> taking a long time. And I decided that I do actually like this for days where I have over dry shampooed my hair. I find this really good to sort of knock back some of that sort of powdery look. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is that it's a very, very strong scent and I can smell it on my hair all day. Um, I could keep this, but I also know a friend of mine wants to try it and I thought I'll just let him use it, see if he likes it. If he likes it, he can keep it. If he doesn't like it, he can throw it out. Um, but I haven't used this for months and months because I find now that I'm taking my kid to the pool like twice a week, I consistently wash my hair. So there's not really a day where I'm like, oh, my hair's looking really gross. I need to put lots of dry shampoo in it. Then make it look better with this product um, because I sort of consistently wash my hair anyway. So I don't need this anymore and I haven't used it for months. So I'm bringing in a styling product and getting rid of a styling product. All right, the last things that I bought in the last couple of months is actually um, SPF products. So this is two of the same product. These are sunscreens from Mecca Cosmetica. I talked about having like a deluxe size in my travel size mini project thing and how I really liked it. And I thought it was really good for winter because it's like this rich sort of... Um, thick sort of balmy cream consistency, but really luxurious, beautiful sunscreen. So I thought I'd stock up for winter. So I bought two of these. Now I was thinking of getting rid of a sunscreen and the one that I was thinking about was actually this one here, which is a fairly new one for me. I've got um, the blue container one and also this uh, purple one. So this is from Neogen and it is um, a Korean SPF. So it's a nice high SPF 50 plus. Um, now this is the UV tone up sun primer so i did get a sample of this like a little sachet and i really liked it and i also got the sachet of the blue one and i ended up buying them both this one is supposed to be brightening or sort of color correcting now the problem is that it is a purple color so i don't know if you can see it looks white on my hand but it is a slight purple tint and on a daily basis if i'm just going to wear this with no makeup it's horrible on me because um yeah it's probably brightening but on my skin tone, it knocks out any yellow tones because it corrects yellow tones. Um, and it just makes me look really pink. So it's a sunscreen that I can't use um, just on a daily basis. So I thought I might get rid of this one. But then recently I've sort of discovered that um, I've been trying to look for ways to shear out some higher coverage uh, foundations that I've got. And I tried primer oil, I tried oil. Um, I've tried a few things, moisturizers and stuff, and I'm finding that SPFs are really good at sort of 
adding a little bit more dewiness and shearing out foundation. So I'm actually going to keep this even though I was planning on getting rid of it. And I might put this in my project pan next month and just as a way to mix with my foundation. So I'm not actually going to get rid of any SPF to bring those two SPFs in. Um, also because like the one that I have in my bathroom at the moment is almost empty. Like this is, there's not much in here. So I'm going to be running low on SPF soon anyway. I always keep one open in each bathroom and I have one in my handbag. So I sort of have three open at any one time. And I think I only have um, like one other backup, which is the blue one of these. So adding in two more is not that big a deal. I use them every single day and the more the merrier. I forgot to say the name. This is the To Save Face SPF 50 sunscreen. Uh, it's a really, really great sunscreen. I've got oily skin, so it is a little bit balmy on me and it makes my skin a little bit dewier, but I don't mind that because it's not like greasy and slippery and making my me makeup melt off. It's actually a really beautiful SPF. If you were really interested in this and it wasn't super expensive, um, I believe as well that Mecca, if you contact Mecca customer service, they do ship their home brand products, which this is one of their home brand brands. Um, they do ship those internationally as well, but you sort of have to organize it through customer service. Um, but anyway, it's a great sunscreen. And if you've got sort of um, skin that needs a little bit more dewiness or that needs a little bit more balminess, this is luxe as. The consistency sort of reminds me of that uh, Bobbi Brown primer in the tub, that really beautiful cream. Sort of reminds me of that, but an SPF, I really love it. It's great. Anyway, makes me feel good when I'm using that. So I wanted to try this as well. This is the Inner Good Light Face Tint. So it's a luminizing and hydrating UVA, UVB. It's got SPF 30 protection. So it's essentially a tinted SPF. Um, I got the shade Beige, which I looked in store. The one down is really light. This is maybe a fraction dark for me, but it's definitely the closest. I feel like the shade jumps are quite massive. Now, I've been using this the last couple of days and I'm not obsessed with it. I think a skin tint is definitely the right name for this. So pretty much they say that it's a luminizing facial tint. Um, it's got hyaluronic acid, pomegranate extract, vitamin E. It's lightweight, sheer and non-oily. So I agree with those things, but... The sheerness is no joke. This to me, I, I think a tint is a great name for it because it just adds a bit of color to my face. It doesn't cover anything. So when I do put this on, it adds a little bit of color. So hopefully, I'm not sure you can see, it adds a little bit of color, which is good for my face because I wear sunscreen so frequently. My face is often lighter than the rest of me. So it adds a little bit of color, but because it's a tint and it's got like no coverage, um, it actually doesn't cover any of my redness because I've got a lot of redness in my cheeks, some around my nose, and I've, you know, got to deal with things. So if you had like really nice skin and you just wanted something to add a little bit of dewiness, maybe a little bit of color, but not cover anything, this is a lovely product. But for me, I've either, I've been mixing it with foundation. So this is another product that works really well if you just put like a pump with a pump of foundation, um, but it sort of defeats the purpose of it. I wish it had a little bit more coverage. So covered my like redness a little bit, but as it is, it just adds like, looks like I've got a little bit of fake tan on. So I don't mind it, but I, I, I probably wouldn't repurchase it personally, but I will get rid of a product to make room for that. So what I was trying to use the last few weeks and I was desperately trying to make this work under my sink, I found an unopened um, La Roche-Posay Effaclar Duo, but this is the tinted version. Now I went to an event with them like years ago. I think they just launched this and I got a light one, which I think I used up. And I also got this medium one, which I never opened. So I thought, look, I may as well give it a shot. I'll try to use it. It is way too dark and way too orange. Now, look, okay, that was the Mecca Cosmetica one. I'll show you this one here. Hopefully you'll see the difference between what I mean about coverage and tint as well. So this is the color, it's very dark. And when you do blend it in, there is some coverage. So it sort of blanks out some of the discoloration and whatnot on my hand, but you can see how dark it is. So this just wouldn't work on me. I did try to use this with lightening products. So for example, I was using the Mecca Max Life Proof Liquid Lightener. This is a really nice product. They paired really beautifully together. They actually took down some of that orange tone because it's got, this is quite 
light and pink toned it made it more neutral but then I realized it's not really cost effective to continue this way because I needed to use so much of it. I almost did like a one-to-one -one ratio. So I would probably have to use two bottles of this to use this up. And these cost 20 bucks each. So I just thought you can go, you can go. So in conclusion, I bought three face products, the two sunscreens I have no regrets about. I love them. I can't wait to open them. This one I will make do, but I probably wouldn't repurchase it. Sea salt spray, I'm loving, it's great. And now polish again, I'll use it, but probably wouldn't repurchase it because I've got better things out there. And to make room for those, I'm getting rid of these three products. And yes, I'm getting rid of three, bringing in five. It doesn't balance out this time around. Um, but hey, I live in Australia. We've got the highest UV levels in the world. We've got the highest rates of skin cancer in the world. And um, if I, I would be a fool to get rid of some decent SPF. So um, yeah, because I go through them so quickly, I'm not too fussed about it. Anyway, that's it for this week. I will see you next week for Project Apocalypse, hopefully Project Imageddon. And I'm thinking of also doing a quarterly favorites and fails because I used to do them monthly. I think now with a lot of project panning and testing out my makeup, I, I don't have things that are sort of new every month to talk about. Um, but I can definitely talk about my favorite and fails for the first quarter of the year. So if you want to see that, let me know. Um, if you've been buying anything awesome that you recommend, let me know. I'm always on the lookout to buy stuff and then get rid of old stuff to make room for the new stuff. Yeah. So uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.